have been wanting to build a NAS for a little little while, um, mostly to store all of the video footage that I'm accumulating. And I just haven't found a machine that is suitable. Um, that and I have a plethora of Raspberry Pi machines running all sorts of little tasks. And so I figured I'd try and kill two birds with one stone by getting one of these Chinese um, X99 motherboards. So my intended setup is something like this. Um, Proxmox sitting on top of the Xeon processor with its 14 cores, 28 threads. Um, I'll install that on a one terabyte NVMe drive, um, which will also host the small drives needed for the virtual machines or the small volumes needed for the virtual machines. I'll set up TrueNAS, which is the primary workload for this box with a somewhere between four and eight um, Western Digital Red NAS drives. Um, probably 10 terabyte drives, as well as a SSD drive to act as a cache for TrueNAS. Um, there are 10 SATA ports on this motherboard, so there's plenty of space to plug drives in. And then I want to replace a whole bunch of my Raspberry Pi. So I've got a Mariah DB server running on one, I've got Home Assistant, I've got a couple of other Debian machines and VMs and things running on Raspberry Pis and some other boxes. And I want to consolidate that all onto into virtual machines and containers sitting on top of Proxmox. So this is the intended configuration. And I have no idea if this is going to work. I've seen some YouTube videos that suggest it should. But um, let's see if we can get this set up. The nice thing about this is it comes with the CPU prepackaged. We'll open that up and have a look now. And then it comes with um, the memory required as well. And the memory, the CPU and the board are apparently tested um, before they are shipped. So here's the IO shield and um, here's the board. It's pretty well packaged. The box is quite sturdy. This took, I don't know, just over a week to arrive from China. And Yeah, lots of packaging. Here's the board. It's relatively compact. Um, I'm going to try and use an old PC box that I have lying around to see if I can fit this in. And um, let's give it a go. It comes pre-packaged with these, you know, second-hand Xeon processors. So you need to install a heatsink. Hopefully I've got one lying around. Um, and the beautiful thing about these, they're a little bit old, they're kind of 2016, but they run at, I think, 2.4 gigahertz with, you know, turbo up to 3 gigahertz, thereabouts. Um, but the big thing is they've got lots of cores, and so this is ideal for running virtual machines. It doesn't come with a CMOS battery, so you need to provide a CMOS battery. Um, yeah, so let's get this thing hooked up and hopefully it works. The memory appears to be SK Hynix. These are two 16 gig sticks that they provide. The board has, going from my left to right, a VGA port which is fine. Um, this is not really good. It's going to be running in headless mode anyway, so this is just for setup, which is okay. An RS-232 port, a serial port. Um, I'm guessing you can get a serial terminal out of that if you needed it. Um, and then six Ethernet ports, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then four USB um, two and four USB 3 ports and then some audio stuff if you need it. Over here we have a number of additional ports. There's a COM2 port, there's a front audio port, there's some sort of debug port and then this whole set of connectors is a whole another set of COM ports. 
Um, in the manual, they're basically all the pins are, are labeled, and so you can connect another you know bunch of COM ports to this. That's front USB and front USB. Um, that's the jumper to reset the CMOS. Um, the M.2 slot for an, um, an NVMe fits in there, and then those are obviously the memory slots. This is the connector for the front LEDs and power switch. Okay, let's get everything plugged in and see if it boots. Let's start by adding the memory modules. It comes with two 16 gig modules. Um, and apparently these have all been tested before, they sh before the board ships. So that just plugs in. That just plugs in. The next thing we need to do is to add a CPU fan on top of this. I have this old Intel fan from a second generation, I think, i5 or i7. Um, that is 30 millimeters across. That is closer to 38 millimeters across and nearly 50 millimeters in diagonal. So our heatsink won't cover this entire area. I'm hoping that this top plate does a little bit of spreading, um, but at least for now, just to get it up and running, I'm not too stressed about that. We need to add some thermal paste, so let's go ahead and do that. The connector for the CPU fan is over here, so I want the cable to come out over there. So I'm going to mount it like that. Power supply should be relatively straightforward. Over here we have the main power supply connector. Over here we have the CPU connector. These are generally labeled on most power supplies. That one is labeled PCIe. And so it must be this one. Okay, we have power to the board. I've got an old monitor. It is actually a VGA monitor. Um, so let's plug this in. Okay, let's plug the VGA in. Okay. It's a standard 2032 coin cell. I've got an old SSD lying around, which I'm just gonna plug in. And... Okay, that's the SSD plugged in. Everything's hooked up. And then we should have a on button over here, but we can actually just jump at these two pins and that should boot the machine. There we go. Okay, there are a couple of beepy sounds. There's the post. Oh, there's an old copy of Windows on this machine. We do actually need a keyboard. Let's get the machine started by jumpering the on-off pins. There we go. Um, from the other YouTube videos I've watched, that's quite normal. Oh, there we go. That's the post with, you know, delete or escape key gets you in. Um, and there we have it. It's up and running. Or well, at least it booted. Let's see what it's doing. In the system settings, we can see that the CPU temperature is at about 37 Celsius which is fine, um, so I'm assuming the cooler, the fan is doing a decent job. Um, it's only running at 900 RPM and it can go all the way up to two and a half thousand, so I'm assuming it's doing a semi-decent job. Um, it would have run faster if it wasn't. And let's see if it's detecting drive. Yes, it is. It's picked up the SSD that I've got plugged in. 
which seems to have an old copy of Windows on it. Okay. It's also got a boot option for built-in EFI shell. I have no idea what that is. If you do and what you can do with it, please leave me some thoughts or links in the comments below. Um, so the board itself with the processor and the 32 gigs of RAM was $180 shipped. Um, and as I said, it took about a week to get to me from China. You know, if I compare that to the price of an RPI 5, you know, that's actually a pretty good deal. Um, then I bought a terabyte NVMe off Amazon. Given that this is a relatively old processor, I didn't spring for one of the latest um, NVMe's. It's basically a Gen 4. And then I intend to add four Western Digital Red Plus drives. They're about $200 on Amazon at the moment. The PSU is about $20 and then not shown in this video, but um, I'm happy to show it in another video. I built a case out of sheet steel, just folded one up and then 3D printed a cabinet for the hot plug drives. And that came to about $20. So all in all for um, a NAS with eight hot plug bays and um, 40 terabytes of storage. Um, the effective storage will be slightly less, will obviously be quite a lot less once we've got um, redundancy built in. But um, we're talking about just over a thousand dollars in July 2024.